Welcome back. Do you know what the difference is between a mutual fund and an ETF? Joining us today is Portfolio Manager Spencer Barnes to explain the difference and why it matters. Spencer, welcome to the show. Thanks, Sybil. It's great to be here with you today. You know, we do a great job as an industry of throwing out all kinds of funny names and acronyms that most people don't even know what it really means. So let's rewind and get back to the basics. What is a mutual fund? A mutual fund, in its simplest terms, is a portfolio of stocks and bonds that's professionally managed by different investment professionals. Now, what would an ETF be? What does ETF stand for? So an ETF is actually essentially the same thing, but what ETF stands for is exchange traded fund. So it's the same underlying fund, but it's traded throughout the day on a stock exchange, much like a stock or a bond would be. So why would investors be interested in investing in mutual funds and ETFs as opposed to picking individual stocks? Well, the biggest benefit of mutual funds and ETFs is instant diversification. When you buy that basket of securities, it's one of the principal tenants of investing. You diversify your risk when you have more than one holding in your portfolio. Mutual funds and ETFs provide a very cost-effective and efficient way to gain access to not only great portfolio managers, but a diversified basket of securities. Yeah, I think about the average investor maybe starting out or with a smaller net worth, a smaller lump of, lump of money. And it might be $5,000, $50,000, or even 100000 And maybe that's not enough to go out and buy a well-diversified portfolio of individual stocks. So what you're saying is a mutual fund or an ETF is a great way to diversify your portfolio, especially with smaller amounts. Absolutely. I, I think one of the best examples for index-based ETFs, for example, is the Canadian Bond Index. There's over 1,300 different individual bonds contained in that index. For an individual investor to go out and try to replicate that themselves would take hundreds of millions of dollars, and it frankly would be almost impossible to do. But based on the ETFs that trade in Canada, you can buy that and you can buy it for fractions of a percent in terms of overall cost. It'll cost you next to nothing and you can buy almost a thousand bonds. It's really, it's a fantastic tool for individuals' portfolios. But there's so many to choose from. How many different mutual funds are available in Canada? So in Canada, there's over 6,500 unique mutual fund strategies. If you were to look at the series, we're getting into 20, 30,000 different ones. It's a very big universe out there. Wow. So that's a little bit overwhelming. How does an investor decide which one's right for them? The best way to start it, and it is overwhelming. It can be overwhelming for myself, and I can only imagine what it is for other folks as well. And you do this for a living full time. <laughs> <laughs> and it never stops. There's new products every day. There's new funds. There's new ETFs every day. The easiest way to start tackling this is to look at what are your long-term objectives and what's the time frame for those. And then also what your individual goals are. Do you have some short-term goals? Do you have some long-term goals? Once you lay the framework for yourself in terms of, okay, I know that my long-term goal is capital appreciation over the next 15 to 20 years, it becomes a lot easier to start selecting the individual components that might work well to help you get to that goal, to help you achieve that objective. Yeah, and Spencer, we talked on another segment about the importance of asset allocation and where you allocate your money. That's a good first step, which will then help you pick the right mutual funds or ETFs to fill in those gaps. It's an absolutely key first step. Yes, and differences again between the two. How does the fee structure work? So the fee structure, it's something we chat about all the time to folks. And it's one of the larger misconception that fees determine everything, that lower cost is better. And while I was thinking about this, one of the best examples I've kind of come up with in saying is cheap or better, if you were to build your dream home, would you want to build it with the cheapest materials possible? Would you want to look for the cheapest contractors possible? I think most would answer and say, no, that doesn't sound right. Well, in investing, it's, it's very similar. There's really good uses for low-cost uh, ETFs to go in there and low-cost mutual funds, uh, for example. But there is a time and a place for each. And that's where having those clearly defined goals is just so critically important. And one thing I'd be remiss if I didn't say is 
fees are all net in mutual funds and ETFs. And what that means is that what you see from the returns of a mutual fund or an ETF is what you would get. It's what you receive. After fees. After fees. Everything is done after fees. That's the great part of the structure. So what you see is what you get. If that portfolio manager has done a good job achieving their objectives, they've done so well getting paid that fee. And you know you can look at that and compare it apples to apples to other managers. Well, that's great. So what you're saying is don't base decisions on fees alone. Look at the after fee returns. And I'm thinking also the volatility. You don't want too many ups and downs along the way. Spencer, thank you for helping us understand the differences between mutual funds and ETFs. It's been great having you. It's been great to be here. Thanks so much.